Hello, sweet peeps. How are you guys doing today? Hello, daddy. How are you doing there today? I'm doing great. We are in the middle of a snowstorm. Um, it's kind of accumulating. I got to play it in a little bit, or I should say work in it a little bit, just around the, the house here. But um, hopefully it stops because I'm getting tired of it. But uh, I bet you guys would love to come play in it for a little bit. No, great. How's the weather down there? It's good, not hot, not so cold. So it's it's in the middle. It's a good weather now. Good. And I can enjoy us. Yes. So uh, do you like to, to play in the snow? I know you're uh, going to. Um... I like I like to enjoy the snow when my kids were little, but it's not as fun anymore because they're all grown up and it's just by myself. And uh, yeah, no, like when my kids were little, we I would take them and pull them on the sleds behind the truck or the quad, or we'd go find big hills and slide down them on sleds. And, or we'd make tunnels or yeah, it was it was a lot of fun when they were little, but it's not not near as enjoyable by your, when they they're all grown up. It's just cold now. And annoying. No, okay. All those mosquitoes down there, are you getting ready to fly away? Yeah, as I figure out a way don't have more mosquitoes. <laughs> Be lucky at home. And uh use some screens so it's okay now <laughs> yes, so so let's get started start. yes, yes let's get started <laughs> let's start in this master class with phrasal verbs a lot of vocabulary to add knowledge and increase uh, your way to talk and understand native speakers, yes? And in the end, we have a quiz also. So that is the group four already. So mm, that is nine, the class nine already, yes? And so let's go to the first one could you read that daddy uh, to aim at to set your sights on something to set your sights or to aim at a goal or a achievement um or to in to intent to achieve achieve a target or a goal. So, like I was telling Star, or mentioning to her back when I was younger, I used to go hunting with my uncle, and we would aim our rifles or our bows at deer. So, or you can say, when I was in school, my target or my I aimed at the target of getting my diploma. And then after that, I aimed at the target to get my um, brain fart <laughs> college degree. Oh, goodness. But yeah, just to aim your sights on something and go for it. Go ahead, Saul. Good, yes, this number one, good examples. Amazing, actually. So to aim at, it's when you aim at a target. When you aim at a target, this means to intend to achieve a, that target. So you just try, you try to achieve that target, for example, they're aiming at reducing their costs by 
10%. So what's the target in this sentence? Reducing their costs by 10%, right? That entire clause is the target. Now notice we have a gerund, gerund verb here. So you can absolutely have a gerund verb. You can aim at doing something, yes? So a gerund verb, you can also use a noun. For example, his slingshot was aimed at his neighbor's garage. So the target in this example is the neighbor's garage. And his slingshot was aimed at, because that's the target, his attempting to achieve. Now, number two, that is- Very good, very good song. Um, to shrug off, to disregard, or not consider something uh, and important. Like, if someone was to call me some bad names or bad words, I would just walk away and shrug it off. It's just words, right? We don't need to um, let it get to us too much. You shrug it off. Well, you used to be able to anyways. Um, to disregard like I don't know. I can't think right now. Go ahead, Sa. Oh, about disregard? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is the number two already, yes? So this number two, this is a great one. And uh, good are examples, Daddy. So to shrug off, when you shrug something off, you disregard it. You don't consider it important, right? So I could say his insult and insult is something negative to say to another person. His insult was aimed at me to use our first phrasal verb, his insult uh, was aimed at me, but I shrugged it off. I don't care. I am not going to let it bother me, something like that. I'm not going to let it hurt me. It's not important. I'm going to disregard it. I'm going to shrug it off. Now notice what I'm doing with, with my shoulders because it's the verb shrug. You sh can shrug your shoulders and you can, we generally do that when we want to say me, whatever, we intend to shrug our shoulders. So that is where this expression comes from. Yes, shrug off to shrug. And the next, Daddy? Sounds like slug. You know what a slug is? <laughs> a snail with no shell. To egg on. Egg on. Ooh, egg on. To encourage someone to do something that isn't a good idea. Great, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, let's go have a race downtown on our cars. No, I probably shouldn't. 
No, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's do it. Yeah, that's egging on. Continuing to push on it until it becomes something. Egg on. Egon. Egon, so make Egon. it 20 Egon. videos in a day. I'm kidding. <laughs> videos in a day. 10, 5. Well, it's good. <laughs> Two. Five. Two, it's okay, no? <laughs> yeah. So let's do it. Go ahead, Saw. Yes. Okay. This number three to egg on. Good year addition. So to egg on, this is a fun one, no? When you egg someone on, you encourage them to do something. Yes. But that something isn't in their best uh, interest. For example, let's say a student is arguing with their teacher. Now that probably isn't it is in the student's best interest to argue with the teacher. But if the other students are saying, yeah, keep going, you're doing great, they're egging him on. They're encouraging. They're encouraging the students on. They're encouraging the students to keep arguing. Even arguing, it's not to his best interest. Yes. Or let's say, you're considering doing something a little risky, like jumping off a high cliff when you don't know what uh, uh, what comes after, <laughs> and maybe you're not so serious about, but the crowd eggs you on so do it you can do it you should do it they're encouraging you even though it can have a really negative outcome the crowd egged him or them on to jump off the cliff now most likely you won't use this in your everyday vocabulary, but you commonly hear this on TV, in movies, or when you're reading. So I wanted to share it with you so you're not confused when you see this egg on and you have some idea what they are talking about. Now you do. Number four now, Daddy. Yes, Daddy can go ahead. Okay, so to turn down or to reject an offer or invitation or just simply to turn down the volume on your stereo um, or turn down the oven because it's too hot or the stove top or turn down your voice because you're too loud. No, but she's meaning to reject an offer or an invitation to, uh, so like I would say, hey, would you like to go out for uh, a couple drinks after work? No. I pass. Maybe next time. That is the turn down um, an offer or an invite. So, turn down. Yeah. Go ahead, Saw. I had some good ones there. Yes, great. Number five. Number five. 
great examples. This is the number four to turn down. When you turn sing, uh, turn something down, it means you reject that something, and you use this in the context of an offer or an invitation. For example, they offered her the job, but she turned it down. She said no to the job. So, of course, you could say she rejected, but it's very common, more common to say she turned it down. So, you can turn down something like a job offer. You can also turn down an invitation from someone else, a social invitation, or a romantic invitation. For example, I asked Marisa out, but she turned me down. When you ask Miss, uh, when you ask someone out, it means you invite them to a dinner or a coffee for romantic purposes. I asked Marisa out, but she turned me down. She rejected my offer. Yes, and now the number five, Daddy. All right, to zoom in or to zoom out, to focus more or less closely or further away. So like on your camera, you can zoom in all the way up until you see the little legs on an ant, or you can zoom out to where you can see the all the mountain ranges over here. Or um, on your telescope, you can zoom in. Zoom into the stars and see the colors in the cosmos. Uh, I don't think they're able to zoom out on those very well. So, yeah. To zoom in, or you could say, I come zooming in on my car, urge part two. <laughs> zoom, zoom, zoom. So, yeah, let's go zooming around town. <laughs> go ahead, yeah. great, great examples about the number five to zoom in or the opposite to zoom out if there are any photographers here you already know what this means because when you zoom in the object becomes closer yes like that <laughs> When you zoom out, the object becomes further away. Yes. So, for example, in the camera conference, you have a camera that's focused on you. And it's really important you have the correct zoom. You don't want to be too close if you're too close to the camera you need to zoom out if you're too far you need to zoom in right so you might ask a colleague hey i can't see you very well can you zoom in yes zoom in or a colleague might tell you, your picture is all blurry. 
e I need to zoom out. So now you know what that means for your next video call, yeah? And now number six, Daddy. All right. To wiggle out of. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Have you ever see the, the, the kids show the wiggles? Kind of oh, yes. Button. It's for little kids, yeah. To wiggle out of or to <laughs> squirm out of. Um, to avoid a situation or task or responsibility in a cunning way. To weasel out of is another way of saying it. To to wiggle out, uh, to talk your talk to someone and talk them out of having to do this responsibility or chore or task. I'd say, um, yeah, I, I I wiggled myself out of having to mow the lawn today. Um. Yeah, I wiggled myself out of having to help clean the house. Kind of like a white lie, but some way of getting out of something without lying, lying. You're using certain good words and finding ways of out of getting out of it. So yes, go ahead, Saul. Yes, so amazing. Good examples, yes. So, you, yes, brought some good examples that we can use in this number six. So we go out of. This is a great one. When you go out of something, you avoid a situation, a task, a chore, a responsibility that you don't really want to do and you avoid it in a cunning way. So let's say that tomorrow you're supposed to clean out the garage and you don't really want to, uh, but your wife or your husband, your sister, your brother, whoever wants you to clean out the garage. Now, tomorrow, when you're supposed to clean out that garage, maybe you get an urgent phone call just at the right moment and you have to go to work and finish something. But you planned that phone call. You planned that phone call to take place, right? As you needed, right? As you needed to clean the garage. So you did that in a cunning way. So you try to we go out of cleaning the garage. So basically, when you ask it to do something and uh, then you try to avoid it by creating a scenario where you have another responsibility. Or maybe a friend asks you to to do something and you tell them oh you have a back injury so you hurt your back and now you can't help them move <laughs> so you try to we go out of it don't go help your friends in the, that case and now daddy the number seven can I read. To hold up or to delay while traveling or to hold up a store or a bank 
as in armed robbery, mm -hmm. is considered holding up. This is a hold up, or this is a stick up, <laughs> or just basically to hold everyone up because you are running late. I, I'm sorry, guys, for holding everyone up. I forgot my cell phone at home. I had to go back and get it. Or um, I got to hold up my head because I'm a little sleepy today. It's another way of putting hold up. <laughs> but no, the way she's putting it here is no. <laughs> the middle one for sure. Holding up traffic because you're driving slow. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's pretty good ones. Go ahead, Saw. So. so amazing. Yes, examples, good examples, Daddy. Yes, that is the number seven. To hold up. This is a must no phrasal verb because we use it when you're del delayed and you're delayed specifically while you're traveling. This could be traveling on a flight or a train. So a more long distance travel, but it can also just be traveling from your office to another Uh, boardroom or from your house to the car also. So it can be a very short distance, right? Travel or a more longer travel as well. For example, my kids always hold me up when I'm trying to leave. So you're trying to leave the house and then your kids, mom, mom, I need this, help me find that, do this for me. And they delay you. They delay you when you're trying to leave. You're trying to travel. My kids, always hold me up now we commonly use this in the passive form so you might have an appointment that you're trying to get get through and you're late and when you get to that appointment you can say an example sorry I'm late. I was held up. Should be held up. I was held up by my kids. Or I was held up. Yes. And now that is number eight. Yes, to hit it off. To have a Positive relationship right from the start. To get it started off good. To hit it off. Um, we hit it off, saw, when we met. It was great times. Yes, to hit it off. Um, or do you think you can hit? Yes, yes. <laughs> Fall off of the T for T ball, hit it off. Um, hit it off. Um, I guess you can't use that one. Yeah, basically just for relationships and friendships. Yeah, we hit it off, me and my buddy, when we first met. You can use it for that too. Um, yeah, that's about it. You're much better at describing. Go ahead, Saul. So. 
Yes. So good. Yes, for sure. It was really positive. So this is a great one to hit it off. When you hit it off, it means you have a very positive relationship with someone right from the first time you meet them. Yes, Raya. Mm -hmm. So let's say you have a new coworker and the first conversation you have, you realize you have a lot in common. You really like the person. They are nice. They are funny. They like you. The conversation is going really well. You can say, wow, we really hit it off. Hit it off. That it is just our relationship. We hit our relationship off. We always use it. We really hit it off. Now notice how I also said we. We almost always use this expression with the subject we. My coworker and I are we. My coworker and I hit it off. When I would not say I hit it off with my coworker, that sounds unnatural. We say we hit it off. And next to that, in the number nine. Okay, to get through. Let's get through these classes so you guys could be a lot smarter when you come over this direction. Or to finish, or to, yeah, to finish something tedious or unpleasant. Um, all right, let's get through this muck so we can get to the other side and try to fish a better spot. <laughs> Or let's get through these math problems because they're tough. Um, let's get through these woods because it's starting to get dark. We're going to get lost. <laughs> uh -huh. So, yeah, to get through. Um, yeah, to get through. Go ahead, Saw. Yes. Do, do you go in the woods there, no? Yeah, to hunt yeah. some animals or have you already had this time before? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I used to hunt a, um, a bit when I was younger. Um, I've stopped. It's just not worth it anymore. There's too many people. And uh, it costs so much now. To no. Just License, you gotta get your license, your tags. Um, and then if you get your tags, then you gotta still pay for the food and the gas and hunt and the time to take off work. It's just oh. not it is as fun as it what it used to be. Oh yes, yes. Like camping. Not the same. Yes, yeah, so this number nine eh, to get through. Good examples, Daddy. When you get through something, it simply means you finish it. But that something is usually a chore or an unpleasant task. Something that isn't uh, enjoyable. For example, I have 10 reports I need to get through by the end of the day. So I have 10 reports I need to finish 
by the end of the day, a busy day. But when we use the phrase of get through, it implies that's going to be some effort, some struggle. I don't really enjoy the task. And the next, Daddy. All right. Yeah. Which Let's number are we on now? Last number 10. Oh, well, to freshen up, to spurt some water on your face so you can wake up, and to freshen up, to quickly improve your appearance, or to liven up yourself so you can be ready for the next class. Um, you get off the airplane and you got to go freshen up in the bathroom because you're probably all sweaty and sneaky. <laughs> 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 to powder your nose, as a woman would say, I got to go powder my nose. <laughs> That's what saying. Um, yeah, after you go to the restroom, you got to freshen up. So, yeah. Freshen up. Take a take a Mentos. Freshen up your mouth. You know what a Mentos is? Yes. You put them in a soda and the bottle goes shooting off. <laughs> you ever do that? Mm, I didn't. Yeah, if you put, you get it. You put but them I all just in a watched... and it. Uh -huh. Like yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see it to do it. I haven't done it yet either. We did it in school, but I haven't done it myself. Uh -huh. Or dry ice in a soda with water. Yes, it's interesting how, how it works. No? Yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. And to record we're... also. Yeah. And to break our, uh, our screen. No. Our face. <laughs> also. I hope not. <laughs> no, we don't want to break our face. <laughs> so now, yeah, go ahead. So, you okay. finish. It's a great examples. And uh, uh, now we can know better about that. Last one, yes. It's already the number 10, right? Yeah. Well, um, uh, I think you already told a lot about it. Could you read this example? Give me five minutes to, to freshen up and then we'll get out of here. Yeah. Yes, good. So this is already the, the last year. Oh my goodness. I thought it was in the beginning or in the middle at least, but already in the last one, yes. So what I could say about the last one, you already give, gave us good example. So this number 10, to freshen up. When you freshen up, you quickly improve your appearance. So before you go into a meeting, or to a social event, oops, you can freshen up. You can go into the best room and you can brush your hair. What else? You can put on fresh lipstick as I did. <laughs> you can check your makeup now. If you're a guy like daddy, maybe you put on deodorant or cologne, things like that. So you quickly improve your appearance. You freshen up. So let's say you're going out for a nice dinner and you might say, oh, just give me five minutes to freshen up. Yes, so are you ready? 
for your fourth quiz. Yay. <laughs> yes, here are the questions. Hit pause, take as much time as you need, and when you're ready, hit play to see the answers. Here are your answers. So hit pause, take as much time as you need to reveal the answers. This is your last group of phrasal verbs. Let's get started in the next class, actually, the last one, the group five. Yes, Betty. So don't forget to subscribe in our channel, right, Daddy? We need you comment also and help us to increase our channel in numbers and also uh, uh, to comment so we can bring something new for you guys, something that you it's your interest in also. Yes, Daddy? Yes, improve improve what we need to improve on. So yes, we, we want to hear from you guys and and help us out. And uh so we can all have fun together. I am I enjoy For this. Sure. Yes. Yes. So I hope you all have a great evening and I uh, hope to see you guys all tomorrow. Thank you for coming. Bye bye. Thank you for coming. Bye bye. See you guys in the next class. And have a great time. Thank you, Daddy. I really appreciate your time, your examples. You're amazing. And see you in the next class. Kisses. Bye bye. bye, -bye. See you guys. Bye bye.